happens when famine comes in your life, the last thing that you need to do is leave Bethlehem. Ha! <laughs> 
decided to leave Bethlehem. Now, now, you may say, well, what is so significant about Bethlehem? Well, I'm glad you asked. Consider with me for a moment that Bethlehem is that place, that heavenly born place, in which the Bible has prophesied that for Yeah. 
just give it all to me. You see, at the end of the day, if you don't give it all to Jesus, uh, there is no real promise of restoration. Because, see, famine, it sets you back for life. How do you restart after you don't build up for so long? You see, there's no coming back for a lot of people in Katrina. Talk to me, let me hear after 10 years, some of them still had made it back. Talk to me in this place. Are you listening? Uh, how do you recover? Hello, uh, uh, when you are a Syrian refugee. Do I got anybody listening to me right now? Famine has a way of robbing everything uh, to the place where if God don't do something in your life, if God don't restore what the locust and the canker worm have She 
See, because restoration is about temporal things. And see, right now, we know that the temporal things of this life are passing away. So if all you've got to show for returning to God is what's in your bank account, the key to your address, then I'm sad to say today that's not enough. Because God just doesn't restore you temporally, but he redeems you eternally. I need some help. I need some help. I need some help. This is what happens. This is what happens. So she's she's gleaming. Look, y'all, she got so much. She can't even consume it all. Watch this, y'all. Watch this. She went from famine to harvest. And then she went, hello, somebody. She went from gleaming. See, she was gleaning. She was picking up the left.